No matter what level of Premiere Pro user you consider yourself to be, there is always a way to improve your workflow and to get shit done faster. Being a fast editor is honestly half the job. It's important for your clients to get their work done efficiently, but also for you so you can move on to the next project and make more money. So how do you speed up your workflow? Well. First things first, this video is sponsored by Western Digital. Now I've got a ton of shortcuts and ways to optimize your workflow all within Premiere Pro, but I can hear you saying to me, Liz, I'm already the Usain Bolt of editors. How could I possibly be any faster? Okay, well, you need a strong foundation even before you run the race. And Usain Bolt probably ate tons of raw spinach before a race, and that spinach is what supported his body so he could run the race as fast as possible. And like that spinach, you need a fast SSD to support you in the speediness that you are already bringing to the table. So, what is a speedy and performy SSD? Well, it's a Western Digital Blue SN550 SSD. That's what. Now, I've honestly used Western Digital drives for years, and it's very likely that the first external hard drive I ever bought was a Western Digital drive. The difference between an HDD hard drive and an SSD on a high level is two things. Number one, a hard drive has a spinning disk, and an SSD is a solid state drive, aka no spinny, no, no spinning disc. And number two, an SSD is faster because of point number one. It's faster to transfer and faster to read and write from. This Western Digital SN550 NVMe M.2 2280 SSD is up to four times faster than SATA SSDs. It's built with a slimline M.2 2280 form factor, which means it's really small, like Chris. But in all seriousness, it features a proprietary design controller and firmware that's optimized for performance. So you've had your spinach, now you've got a solid SSD supporting your workflow, and we will finally get into some more tips in Premiere Pro. First thing we're gonna do is set some keyboard shortcuts in Premiere Pro. Number one is set Command-1 and Command-2 to be ease in and ease out on keyframes. This will allow you to select the keyframes that you made in your effects panel and add ease out at the start of your motion and ease in at the end of your motion. Number two is press G to access your clip gain controls so you can quickly adjust your clip's volume. This is great when you wanna change your volume quickly on the fly and test out to see how it feels against the rest of your audio. Number three is add edit. And for this, we're going to use the Q and the W keys. This shortcut is great when dealing with footage that involves a lot of talking and a lot of pauses. So first you wanna to navigate to your keyboard shortcuts and set the W key to add edit and ensure that your Q key is set to ripple trim previous edit to playhead. Then as you're playing back your footage, if you see the start of a pause, press W to make the cut. And then at the end of that pause, go ahead and press Q to snap the next clip back to the previous cut that you just made. Handy, isn't it? Number four, hold control and click to make a keyframe in your clip. Normally, if I wanna make a keyframe in a clip in my timeline, I would go over to my pen tool, click on various points in the clip to create the keyframes, but with just your regular cursor activated, you can press on control and then click on points of the clip to create your keyframes. Number five, using J, K, and L to speed up playback. When playing back your footage, you can use the L key to play back your footage at two times the speed. So this is a great tip Tip for skimming through footage quickly and to find a specific point in your footage as well. So if you press L again, it'll actually speed up your footage even faster and then you can hit J to slow it back down or you can hit K just to pause your footage. Number six, the wiggly key for a full screen view. What better name to call this key on the keyboard than the wiggly key? If there is a name for it, please leave it in the comments below. I do not know what it is, but I'm going to call it the wiggly key. So do you see that little button up here? Here on the left side of your keyboard. I never really use it either, but it actually has a very useful feature in Premiere. So all you have to do is hover over whatever panel you want to go into full screen mode on and then hit your wiggly key. And now you've got it full screen. 
Isn't that fantastic? This is great when I want to quickly see my video in a larger form factor, or if I just wanna find something deep in my very complicated timeline. <laughs> Number seven, you may already know that the shortcut key A activates the track select forward tool. But what you might not know is that if you hold down shift with the A tool already activated, you can select everything forward on just one layer. So let's say you want to apply an effect to all your A roll footage only. You can do just that. Number eight, this one is useful if you have several layers that you need to make a cut in at the same point in your timeline. First, activate the cut tool by pressing C, and then you can hold down shift and click on the timeline where you wanna make your cut, and you'll see that it cuts every layer at once. Number nine, one of the most common transitions that you can apply to an audio or video clip is constant power or cross dissolve. These are known as your default transitions. Now you could navigate to the edge of your clip, right click and select apply default transitions, but who has time for that when you can simply click on the edge of your clip and press shift D. Number 10 is Command R for speed duration. Another common function that you probably use all the time is the speed duration function. A super fast way to access this window is by highlighting your clip and then press Command R. This next category is workspace hacks. So number one is save your different workspaces. There's no perfect science for this. It's just whatever you think works best for your exact needs. For my everyday editing, I find this workspace works really well because it has every panel that I typically need when editing basic footage. Now to do this, simply build a workspace by going to window and selecting the panels that you want to open. Then when you're happy with it, go to window, workspaces and save as new workspace. Number two, use Freeform View so that Premiere acts kind of like a mood board when compiling footage together. I use Freeform View when looking at a bin of footage or other assets to get a more flexible way of sorting through my footage. For example, if you have a ton of footage from a shoot on location, you could use this view to clump all the different types of shots together and then create a bin just for that footage and for a more organized experience. Number three, clean up the toolbar so that you have no unused buttons on there and be honest with yourself. How many of these buttons do you actually use. The only buttons that I use on here are probably the ones that I've added myself. All you have to do is drag the useless buttons away from the toolbar and they will disappear. And I like to add in the global effects button, the loop playback button, and the proxy toggle button. Those are some of my faves. Finally, we have organization hacks. Number one, presets. You can make presets of any effect so you can easily apply the same transform effects straight from the effects panel. Let's say you often add a punch in effect that goes from 110% scale to 120% scale. Apply a transform effect, make your animation, and then right click on the effect and choose save preset. Then name your preset something appropriate and it'll be saved in your effects panel under presets. I like to go even one step further and add this preset to my favorites bin. Number two, create a project template with all the essentials that you need so you can copy and paste it each time you have a new project. To do this, make a new project file and add in all the assets that will be consistent across all your future edits. For me, that includes my intro and outro graphics, logos, a few sound effects, and naming a few of the layers. Then whenever I have a new project, all I have to do is copy that project file and paste it to a new location. It'll automatically generate the new project file folders when you first launch the new project. Number three, when I first learned this next tip, my mind was blown because I always apply one of my custom LUTs to my footage and normally I would have had to browse on my computer for the LUT each time I want to apply it because it's not in the drop down list in the creative tab. So on a Mac, find Premiere Pro in the applications in Finder, show package contents, contents, Lumetri, LUTs, creative, add in your LUTs and rename them with an A and a dash so that they show up at the top of your list. And then on a PC, here's what you would do. You'll go to this PC, local disk, program files, Adobe, Adobe Premiere Pro, Lumetri, then you'll go to LUTs, you'll go to creative, and then you'll drag in your LUT into this folder and rename it there. Changing the name changes the organization structure and will now populate your drop-down creative tab with all of your custom LUTs at the top. The sun 
has literally set on this video. I can see it in the monitor over here. That was a lot to get through, guys. I hope you learned something new, even if you take one or two little hacks from this video. It's honestly gonna save you a lot of time. So if you like this video, please give it a like down below. It really does a lot uh, to support this channel. Subscribe if you're not already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified when we post all future videos. We post every week over here. That was my cat knocking over a cable. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, should we do her purring again? Thanks for watching.